Hi everyone, this is Professor Rob Marklow for the UMass Amherst Department of Architecture in the Analysis and Representation 2 class in spring of 2015. Today I'm going to be giving a quick tutorial on how to download, install, and open Grasshopper, as well as how to load the definition that you will be working with over spring break to create a surface based on two images that you have already generated in Photoshop, uh, one of a field and the other of an object. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is go to the blog. So again, that's blogs.umass.edu slash arc541-rramlos. And uh, on the blog, I've created a new tab. It's called GH, stands for Grasshopper. Click there, and uh, there's a few different things here. The first entry is an assignment, our first assignment, for the Grasshopper and Digital Fabrication Unit. Uh, so we can go ahead and download that. Just click on it, and it'll download. The other thing, the other two things that I have, one is the link to the downloads page for Grasshopper, and an additional link to the Grasshopper website, which has a lot of different resources, including tutorials, uh, forums, and that's also the hub for plugins, should you choose to go further with your explorations in Grasshopper. Okay, so if we're going to download Grasshopper, I'm going to click on the download link, and go to download here and barring internet disasters you should be brought to another page where you will enter your email and click download and then you're gonna run the installer you can run it on any computer including the school computers and it'll just update grasshopper on those computers if you're having any problems with components not working uh, you probably just need to download and update grasshopper so I'll go ahead and enter in my email address and hit next download now and you'll see it'll start downloading So it's a fairly small file and once it's done, we're just going to open it up. And five, four, three, two, one. Okay, click. And uh, then you're going to install it. Click for just me. And next, install. And uh, well, this says that there's an error, but um, that's probably because Rhino is open. Um, so let's go ahead and close that. Okay, try again. Again, we'll click for just me. Next, install, installation completed successfully. So you can see it's really not complicated. It's really quick. Uh, the software is free, the download is free. Uh, so you might as well install it. Okay, so now when you go and open Rhino, go ahead and open Rhino, and we're gonna be working in inches. So I'll go to new and do small objects inches. Um, the soft, the the definition is set up to work in inches, so uh, you'll need to be in inches, otherwise you're going to end up with unit issues and have to scale your surfaces later on. So if you want to avoid that, we're just going to go ahead and load a, a grasshopper file, a new grasshopper file in inches. Okay. Now, when you now that you've downloaded Grasshopper, when you then start typing in Grasshopper, you'll see that you have a new command in Rhino and click enter and you're going to get this loading menu here which is going to load all of your all the plugins for grasshopper that are installed on your computer and you're going to get the grasshopper window so we've already gone over basic operations this is the canvas and you have your toolbars and your menus up at the top so the next thing we need to do is load that definition which you've downloaded off the blog uh, into Grasshopper. So to do that, I'm going to take the file. I'm going to just drag and drop it right onto the canvas. It'll take a second to load. This this uh, Grasshopper file is fairly large, and that's because there are two embedded images, so that uh, when you open up the file, it should work automatically. Okay, so we are all set there, and we've got we've already got a surface generated in Rhino, and so. I go into the 3D view. You can now see that there is a surface. There's also a sphere. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but this is the surface, and it's generated based on two images. So over the past week or soon, you're going to generate a series of five images. Um, and you're working in partners. And so one of the, one of the 
pair will create an object, uh, will create a uh, set of field images. So those are images without a specific subject. And the other, uh, the other partner will create a series of five object images, which are images with a specific subject. Okay, so I've created a few different, um, a few different images, so you guys can take a look. And uh, uh, let's see, we've got uh, these are a series of field images, and this is the sort of transformations that I'm looking for. So in this first image, I've just created, I've just added a significant blur to the image. The second image, I've increased the contrast substantially. The third image, I've used the posterize command uh, in, under adjustments in Photoshop to create these pools of darkness and to to create a posterized look. Uh, the next one, I added some significant texture using a filter in Photoshop. And in the last one, I used another filter called the Torn Edges filter, which creates a similar effect to the posterized look, but a little bit more uh, graphically stylized. Looking at the object images, I've got the first image is just a high contrast black and white. The second is a high contrast and blown out uh, color contrast uh, operation using a series of filters in Photoshop. The third, I added some grain using the um, using a filter in Photoshop as well. Uh, the fourth, I have inverted the colors of the original image, and in the fifth, I have used an orange filter to to remove all of the blue and green and just add in kind of an orange texture behind a red background. So I've just played with the colors a bit. Okay, so those are my various images, so I can then go ahead and I'm, I'm going to go over in general how to use this, but we're going to load those images into two places in the definition. So the first, and you're going to be looking for these red groups here, so red is where you're going to input your images. The first one, the field image, you're going to input a field image here, so I already have one image in here, but I'm going to go ahead and add in another one. So to do that, I'm going to right click and go to image. It'll bring up the menu. You may need to navigate to this location on, or to the location of your images. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click on one, click open, and you can see that my surface changed as a result of that image being put in there. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. I'll right-click, go to image, and maybe I'll try the grainy image here, and we'll see what that does. So that also changed the surface. So now I've got my two images. So the object image here, again, we're looking for the red boxes for inputs. Um, and then our final output, which is our final surface, you can see if I click on this component in the Rhino viewport, the surface will turn green. If I click off it, it turns red. So I can know what I'm selecting uh, by what is turning green. So I can right click and go ahead and bake. And click OK. Again, we're right clicking to get to that menu. And then if I look in Rhino, I now have a real Rhino surface, which I can move to the side. I'll go into a ghosted viewport. And uh, so you can see I've generated a surface. And that surface is a, is a combination of the field image and the object image. And the object image is overlaid on top of the field image. And the two are combined to create a third surface. OK. So let's talk about the controls. And there are a fair number of different controls. The controls for this uh, definition are going to have blue groups. So you're looking for different blue groups. But also, you're, in general, if you're looking for controls, you're probably looking for sliders. So sliders look like this. Um, they have a little diamond, which you can slide back and forth. And um, there may be a little bit of a lag on this on this definition, and there are different ways to enter in values. So let's look at this first one. This says field image resolution, and it controls the resolution of the field image, so um, that background image. And you can increase it for more fidelity to the actual field image. So we're creating a height field, just the same as using uh, the height field from image command in Rhino. It's the same. Uh, it's basically the same operation. There are a few tweaks, uh, but we've just replicated that in Grasshopper. But this way we have a lot more control and it's all parametric. So let's just say that right now the resolution is at 30. Maybe we want to increase it substantially, maybe to 70. Click Enter. 
and that's changed the surface a little bit. Um, that, the reason that we're not seeing a big change is because there isn't a lot of contrast between uh, close pixels in this field image that I've selected, and that's because it's been blurred. So the effect of the effect of blurring the image in Photoshop is that you get a much smoother surface here. Okay, but if I if I right click and go to image, I can change that and we'll see that if I add in a very different image, we're going to get a very different texture. So now you can see I've created a much different uh, texture here. Um, and this is based on the field image. So now we have a few different controls here. We have that resolution, which we've already changed. We can increase it once more. We'll go to 90. We can go up to 100. That's increasing the resolution. And we can also increase the intensity of that field image. And so this one I'm just going to drag. And you'll see that there's a resulting increase or decrease. So I can go up all the way up to 5 or all the way down to 0. If I go to 0, that means that the field image has no effect on the final surface. So I can play with the different values. And I'll try somewhere around one. Okay, so I've created my background object. And the way that I've done that is I've created a series of points and created a points from that surface. So if I right click here and go preview, you can see that here there's a big grid of points. And so the location of those points is generating that surface. Okay, but I'm gonna right click and unpreview that. Okay, now when we're talking about the object image, you have a few more controls uh, over how the, the final image works out. So the first thing that I'm going to show you, I've created a mesh preview which actually overlays this image onto your surface. So to look at this one, we're going to right click and go to enable, enabled here. And that's going to that's gonna put the image, which in this case is this flower, is going to put that image onto the surface that I've generated with that field image. So then the reason that we're seeing this red over here is that this final surface is also previewed. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And so now if I go to the top view, you can see that it's starting to look a little bit like the image of this flower. And there's some, there's some resolution issues. So I can go ahead and increase the resolution. <coughs> so maybe I'll go to 50 and see how that looks. Now you can see that there's a higher resolution there, and we're getting a very different image. Okay, so all of these can be played with. You have lots of different controls here. Um, and the effects of that image uh, can be seen in, the, in this mesh colors preview here. So anything that you want to preview is going to have this green group. So I'm going to go ahead and disable that. Rather than unpreviewing it, I'm going to disable it because it does take a little bit of memory. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to disable it, and then I'm going to go back over to the end here, to the final surface. Right click and go to preview. So now I'm looking again at that surface. So I've increased the resolution. I can also increase the intensity, and so that control is this second blue slider on the top over here. And I can increase the intensity, and that's going to increase sort of the pokiness of that surface. So you can see the change there. So maybe I'll go with kind of a higher value. And lastly, the way that the object image is being is affecting that final surface is it's actually looking at a particular color in the image. So right now, if we look at the image that I produced here, it has all sorts of colors. It's got green. It's got blue and it's got pink, which is essentially a red color. So uh, we can actually select the color that we're going to look at. So right now we're looking at the red color, but if we want to base it off of the green pixels, we can go to green, or if we want to go to blue, the look at the blue pixels, we can go to blue. Now, lastly, we've been, we've been looking at this sphere here. So if we want to move that sphere around, what you can do is use this slider here, which is a two-dimensional slider, and I can move the sphere, which is going to move the influence of that image around on that surface. So I can bring it down to a corner, uh, I can put it in the middle of the side, I can use the rule of thirds to generate a location for it, and so you can see that the, the image, the object image, the effects of the object image are concentrated around that sphere point. You can also change the intensity, or rather the range, of that, that sphere uh, by moving this slider. So if you go down, 
it's going to actually have more influence. It's going to increase the range generally. And if you go up, then it's going to reduce the range. So if you go to somewhere in the middle, it's going to have kind of a moderate value. Okay, so let's just say that we want to take a look at that particular version of the surface. Um, you know, we've played with all the different controls, so we also have a resolution here, which is for the object image, so I can change that, maybe go to 20, so we'll get a much smoother surface as a result of that object image. Come over to the end, go to final surface, and bake. Click OK. All right, so now I've got two out of my five surfaces that I need to generate. So you can see these two are really pretty similar, so maybe I'm gonna change the images First of all, so I'll right click and go to image. I'm gonna create some, I'm gonna create a completely different surface here. I'll click OK, open. So I've, in, I've inserted that inverted image, and then maybe I'll come over here and I'll put that blurred image back in. And so now, if we look over here, we've got a very different sort of image, uh, a different sort of surface, and so now I'm going to play with some of those values. So I'm going to, first I'm going to decrease the resolution here, I'm going to go down to 50, Let's see if we can get a very different sort of image. And I'm going to increase the field image intensity, I'm going to go to 2, so I'm just double clicking here and typing in whatever value I want, so actually let's try a little bit higher, 3, so now we've got a pretty deformed surface to start with. In my object image, I'm going to change the location here. Maybe I'll bring that point over to one of the corners, the upper corner. And I'm going to change the object image resolution. I'm going to put that all the way up to 90. Click. Okay, so that's looking pretty interesting. I've got some sort of a ridge developing there from something in the image. And uh, let's see, I can also increase the range by decreasing this value. Okay, so that's a very different surface than those other two. All right, maybe I'm going to look, let's see what happens if I play with some of these controls. If I go to red, it gives me an even more contrasting surface. I think the red is probably the most interesting. So we'll go ahead with that. Maybe the object intensity is looking good. Object image intensity, and I'll go ahead and bake that final surface. Okay. So you can see, if I, and then you can go ahead and close Grasshopper. You can see that now this image, uh, these images have resulted in a very different surface than these other two, right? So I've got a very different set of surfaces here. Uh, particularly the, this last one is quite different than the others, and you can see the resolution of that object image in the final ISO curves of your final surface here. So here you can see the ISO curves are widely spread, whereas here they're very tight. So um, that's really changing the resolution and changing the resulting surface in a substantial way. Okay, so you guys are gonna create five different surfaces. Then you're going to bring them into, you're going to bake them all into Rhino, and uh, you're gonna create renderings of each. So the renderings can be in 2D or perspective. You can do a series of renderings for each one. Uh, but you're going to go ahead and create renderings. You can use V-Ray if you'd like, or you're welcome to just use the Ray Trace with Neon plugin. The Ray Trace with Neon. You need to make sure under your sun menu that the sun is on, and your skylight is on. And then we're going to play with the direction of the sun, maybe, and move that around a little bit. We're going to try a few different things. Uh, get a nice looking rendering that's uh, going to show the contrast of the surface, the, uh, the texture of the surface, and uh, you're going to put that on a board. That there's an, there will be an InDesign layout on the blog that you can use. You put that on the board on a board with the original images that created that surface, and uh, you're going to bring that. Um, yeah, bring that into InDesign and uh, lay them out and bring them in on Tuesday. Okay, so that's the whole assignment. Looking forward to seeing what you guys produce over the next few days, and uh, good luck.